I was a kid in the late 60s, early 70s, I used to suffer from travel sickness in the back of the car. And I used to, uh, the way to cure it was to get my dad to light up a cafe creme cigar and puff it back uh, to me in the back of the car. And that worked a treat. Uh, and it was an act of kindness uh, at the time. Uh, and it went on and then it stopped around the mid 70s because clearly wasn't a good thing to be doing. So things that were socially acceptable and absolutely reasonable become socially unacceptable. Um, and I think we need a very different food and physical activity environment in 10 years' time. That's what Healthy Ireland is about, uh, addressing the health inequalities. Uh, and uh, it's fantastic to see uh, uh, members of the Healthy Ireland Council, of which I am a proud member and wearing that hat today among others, <laughs> Uh, here today. Uh, uh, thank you for supporting me because this is my area. Uh, there's lots of areas that are important to me, but this is the one that uh, I work with every day. Uh, I go in, uh, we talk about the time bomb uh, ticking. It's exploded for myself and Francis Finucane and Sinead Murphy uh, in dealing with child and adult obesity. Uh, and I'm just going to say a few words. This is uh, fat. Uh, under a microscope from a healthy individual, uh, functioning well. And fat is a really important part of your body. Uh, you need it to be working well. If I show you what fat looks like uh, in the setting of obesity, uh, and remember fat is your energy burn. I oh, know uh, there is another, we might see it at the end, but I'll show you what fat looks like because uh, people who understand are more likely to be able to help uh, survival and people to find solutions. Uh, but this is a fact for those of us dealing uh, in weight management clinics with severe obesity, that for 90% of people, uh, weight loss is 90% irreversible. The flip side of that is that 10% weight loss is achievable for 90% of people, and that's really good. But by the time you've got to the extreme end, uh, it's not uh, good enough, and that's why access to treatment uh, is so important. Uh, Ivan Perry was commenting that, is this slide useful anymore? It just looks like it's impossible. These are the 198 different determinants of obesity, uh, as set out by the UK Foresight Map. You look at it and policymakers go, oh, it's all over. But if you group them, there's actually seven main groups. And five of those seven main groups are outside of your control. They're environmental. They're the physical activity environment, the food environment, uh, the societal influences, the marketing and consumption. So if the majority of the determinants of obesity are environmental, then obesity should spread within the environment. And that's what this magnificent study from 2007 shows. Uh, obesity spreads within your community to three degrees of separation. If a friend of yours becomes overweight or obese in the next five years, you are 70% more likely to become overweight or obese. If a friend of a friend of yours becomes overweight or obese, then you're 40% more likely. So three degrees of separation, not unlike other chronic diseases like depression. The conclusion of this study in the New England Journal of Medicine was the best way to lose weight is to change to thin friends. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a reasonable scientific conclusion. Uh, the body mass index over 50 as population obesity has doubled in the last 30 years, has gone up 1,200%. Uh, that's the explosion that we're trying to deal with at the treatment end. Uh, I was uh, kind of asked to keep children off the slides, and I know Minister Harris has gone, so he's the closest we would have now to a child on these <laughs> slides. Um, but uh, we've just had research accepted that proves uh, that putting somebody's name on a bottle uh, influences their choice age 10, age 11, age 14, age 32. Uh, and what industry's challenge is in, in this obesity action plan and policy is to use that positively to promote the sale of the healthy option. Uh, and, and that's where uh, industry are already making big strides in reformulation, but the marketing has also got to switch significantly 
over the lifetime of this plan. Uh, when anyone who does the lotto uh, is twice as likely to buy a product with a win on it. Uh, there's biology to the advertising. Uh, the same part of the brain that likes high fat, high salt, high sugar, likes a flutter. So they don't want to send you to America, they want to shift product. Uh, hands up here who's played Doritos Roulette. 25% uh, of our children have played it, and 2% of our adults. Uh, and there are the stats. So this is, one in 10 of these chips is hot chili, and sends you running for a drink of water. Nine out of 10 are plain. Uh, adults don't even know it exists. Uh, most uh, 10 to 12 year olds in the country have played it. I, I know that because my 12 year old, this is how I know about it, I came home and my 12 year old was going toe to toe with the 12 year old across the road uh, in this game. So I, I confiscated them and made a slide. <laughs> Play has changed uh, and it's not gonna change back. So we have to engineer physical activity back into uh, daily life. Uh, devices are a fact of life, Tony. I have lost that battle too at home. Uh, and I think we should try and make it a positive, but engineer physical activity back in. Uh, we're doing work uh, between Sinead Murphy's group and, and Declan Cody's group in Crumlin on obesity in kids. And, and just look at the weights of the 12 year olds. Uh, 60 of them mean weight 90 kilos. Uh, blood sugar is fine. Let's look at the insulin that is controlling the blood sugar and think of that poor little uh, beta cell in the uh, pancreas trying to keep the sugar normal. Uh, that's not going to last long. And Sinead Murphy has done some qualitative work with kids attending her service. Uh, age five, nobody in my class will play with me. Uh, I'm six, but everyone thinks I'm in third. Uh, this action plan and policy has to make that historical and unacceptable. So uh, this is a sobering slide uh, that informs why prevention is at the heart of this action plan. And this is my final slide because Healthy Ireland is at the beginning and the end of it. it it's the framework. Uh, this policy contains an action plan. I never thought I would see a, a department issue a policy with timelines, clear timelines. Uh, this policy has informed the appointment of a clinical lead that will take up uh, post in the next six to nine months, who will be an independent watchdog. It will be uh, me or a Francis Finucane or a Sinead Murphy or a Catherine Hayes who's involved in this area, who needs to see it working. And if it's not working, we'll just call it and say, guys, we're not doing it. Where is the money? You know, we heard it's, there will be money, but will there be enough? Um, so I am really privileged to be a part of this uh, launch uh, and thank you very much for your attention.